Hello everyone. I welcome you all to another episode of Understanding the Fundamentals of Performance Engineering. In all of videos on performance testing, we talked about request and response. But when we dive deeper, we can see there are various methods of HTTP requests. So today we will see what are all the methods we have and their advantages and the limitations. This is me Vasant Shanmugam welcoming you to Little's Law channel. With no further ado, let's dive into the world of performance engineering. Before we understand what is HTTP requests, let's see what is HTTP. HTTP is a protocol which allows the fetching of resources such as HTML documents. It is the foundation of any data exchange on the web and it is a client server protocol, which means requests are initiated by the recipient, usually the web browser. Clients and servers communicate by exchanging individual messages. The messages sent by the client usually a web browser are called requests and the messages sent by the server back as an answer are called responses. Say for example, we search a name on Google which is sending or we are sending a request to the Google server and we get back the result as response and the response contains the status information and the requested content. When talking about the HTTP request methods, we have seven types of frequently used HTTP methods. And out of these seven types of HTTP request method, we commonly use two methods. They are GET and POST. First, the GET method. GET method is a HTTP request method which is used to request data from a server. For example, we search the Google asking for the weather of our city and it sends back the response. This is an example of a GET request. The query contains the name and value pass and that is sent in the URL of a GET request. Let's see what are the other things we have with the GET request. GET requests can be cached. GET requests remain in your browser history. GET requests can be bookmarked. And GET requests should never be used when dealing with sensitive data because of the previous three things. Since they can be cached, they remain in your browser history and they can be bookmarked. GET requests have length restrictions and these GET requests are only used to request data and not for any other type of modifications. Next comes the POST method. A POST request is used to send data to the server, for example, a customer information 
or file upload etc using HTML forms. The data sent to the server with the POST request is stored in the request body of the HTTP request. Let's see an example. In this example, we are posting the values to the server as part of the request. Let's see the other notes on the POST request. POST requests are never cached. POST requests do not remain in the browser history. POST requests cannot be bookmarked and POST requests have no restrictions on data length. And all these points are totally opposite to our GET request. Next comes the put method. Put method replaces all the current representations of the target resource with the uploaded content. And let's see the difference between the post method and the put method. Put requests are idempotent, which is calling the same put requests multiple times will always produce the same result. On the other hand, calling a post request repeatedly have side effects of creating the same resource multiple times. Let's now move to the head method. The head request is same as get method but it transfers the status line and the header section only. Say for example, if the request is to return a list of users, the GET request returns it. At the same time, if the request is a HEAD request, the request will not return the list of users. Instead, it will return the header section and not the body section. Next comes the DELETE method. The delete method removes all the current representations of the target resource given by the URI. Next comes the options method. The options method describes the communication options for the target resource. Let us now see the differences between the GET and the POST method. When it comes to clicking on the back button or clicking on the reload button, the GET requests are harmless, but the POST request will resubmit the data. Bookmark 
When it comes to bookmark, the get requests can be bookmarked, but the post requests cannot be bookmarked. Cached. When it comes to cache, get requests can be cached. At the same time, the post requests cannot be cached. Encoding type. The POST request has multi-part encoding for the binary data. History Next comes the history, where the parameters remind in the browser history for the GET requests and the parameters are not saved in the browser history for the POST request. Next comes the restrictions on the data length. Yes, in the GET request, when sending a data, the GET method adds the data to the URL and the length of the URL is limited to a maximum of 2048 characters. But in POST requests, there are no restrictions. Restrictions on data type. Get requests allows only ASCII characters. Post requests have no restrictions and binary data is also allowed. Next comes the most important aspect, security. GET requests is less secure than the POST request and also GET requests save sensitive information but the POST requests are safer when compared to GET requests since they don't save any sensitive information and the parameters are not stored or shown in the browser history. When it comes to visibility, the data is visible in the URL when we send a GET request. On the other hand, the data are not visible in the POST request. With that, we come to an end. We will see more videos on performance testing and various other techniques. Please don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching your favorite Little's Law channel. Thank you.